Janine? How are Hello. You? Good, good. So today we're going to do a follow up on our having luck in your chart, aren't we today? We are. You're going to go back by now. popular demand. Absolutely, by popular demand, because who wouldn't want to know where your luck is? I would. So I'll pass it over to you and you can go through the houses for us. It'd be fantastic. Okay, so let's just do a refresher on the last video. So Jupiter was traditionally all about luck. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about what luck really was. And what luck is, is the things that you're blessed with that you don't have to work very hard about. You know, that we've all got talents that are easy for us and things just drop out of the heavens. Uh, and we've all got it. Even if you think you're an unlucky person, you've got it somewhere in your life. May not be where you want it to be. And that's the key. Yeah. Um, the key is to not strive to have luck in areas where you don't have them. Mm. And I think lucky people know where their luck is. So <clears throat> Jupiter also represents your uh, connection with spirit. And I think that's really where you get your luck, where you are connected with spirit. So it represents your sort of faith in God, but if you don't believe in any of that, it's just your ability to detect when the right place at the right time is and when to act. So you don't have to have any belief. You just have to know what feels right. Yeah, so you've got to know yourself, don't you? You've got to know yourself. And all the lucky people know where their luck is. Mm. Problem with luck is if you don't keep your humility you can get really arrogant in those areas. Yeah. And this is when you eat, where your ego can inflate and you think, I'm amazing, I do this, but actually it's not you. It's yeah. spirit, the universe, or something greater than you. So just got to be careful not to get overconfident in that area or you will misjudge things due to your ego inflation. You'll exaggerate it or, or become too excessive. Okay. So there's always a warning with these things okay so you were asking me jennifer mm -hmm. you prompted us to this video yep. how do you know where your luck is so for everybody listening they all want to know where their luck is so that's what we're going to go through today where is luck for you in your life right so you're going to go through each house and you'll also give them um, a link we'll put a link in the the thing um for people to look up their own charts and see where their jupiter is is that right that's right so i'm just going to share my screen and go to a universal chart calculator on one of the many many websites that you can use so here we go i'm going to share my screen now can you see that jennifer i can oops no lost there we go so this is on astro dynast which is astro.com so have a look for the birth data entry point so i'm going to just enter somebody here jennifer do you have a suggestion yeah. for me um why don't you do mark mark yeah, yep we need a male on the 24th of november yep 1955. 55 and the time of birth? 30 a.m. Sorry, what, what was 10, it? 10? 10. 10.30 a.m. Yeah. 10.30 a.m. And where was Mark born? Uh, he was born in Geelong. Australia, birth town, Geelong. Yeah. Let's have a look. Except Geelong. Here we go. And there we have it. <coughs> so this is the birth chart of Mark. Yeah. And that all looks Greek right now. But mm -hmm. what I want to look for is a, a glyph or a symbol that looks like a fancy four. And in this case, it's right there, which looks like about 2.30 to me. Yep. So see that little four there? Yes. Can see okay. It. Now, we'll, I'll, I'll do a blow up of that glyph in a minute. But you can see here, if you've never looked at a birth chart before, it looks like a pie or a clock. 
And there are 12 different parts of this pie or 12 different sections of the clock. And it starts over here at nine o'clock, mm -hmm. okay, 9 p.m. So uh, this zone in, uh, coming down from the nine o'clock, like eight o'clock to nine o'clock is called the first house. You'll see a little one there. And then it goes second house, third house, fourth, fifth, right through to the 12th. Yep. So that represents the 12 different areas of your life, starting with the physical body, money, family, friends, lovers, education, etc. So 12 different areas of our life. What we want to look for is where the Jupiter is. Now, mm. this very lucky man has his luck in the area of relationships. Mm. So... This man's very blessed with who they're in a relationship with, and this special person brings them luck, regardless if that person themselves was lucky. So the um, spouse of this person may not be lucky at all, but the contribution of that spouse's energy to this person is very expansive. So Jupiter brings not only luck, but good opportunities. So there you guys say so this man's a lucky man. Mm -hmm. um, in With Jupiter, you've got healthy Jupiters and unhealthy Jupiters. Uh, this person's got a reasonably healthy Jupiter. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jupiter's in the sign for this person of Virgo. Virgo's the sign of uh, the therapist the scholar, the student, or someone that works really hard for their talent. So I think this, this person's spouse brings a lot of um, maybe education, information, um, new skills into this person's life. So there you go. That was completely random. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is show you the house system. Okay. So he, here you can just go onto Google Images and print out this, this, this pie with the 12 different sections. And you can use that as a reference as we go around and do this. So if you just Google astrology houses on Google images, you'll just get tons of these pies. So any of them will do. They're all slightly different, but that's the one I'm going to use. Now, here's Jupiter, very big planet, huge planet. I think it's our biggest planet outside the sun. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that Jupiter expands everything. Mm -hmm. it, it puffs it up, up and it expands it. So the glyph is this fancy looking four here. Okay. That's what you're looking for when you do your chart calculation. So I'm going to go back to here. So again, what we're looking for is this fancy four symbol in any of these 12 houses. Okay. Does that make sense, Jennifer? Yes, it does. It's all clear. All right. So I'm going to start with number one. Okay. So what I've done is I've done a bit of homework to highlight my points here on who's got what, and you might know them. Hopefully you'll know all of them. Right. So the first house is the physical body, the face, the physical body, the persona, and also the reputation of the individual. So this is like, um, this is us skin deep. So it's what people see on the outside. Now I've chosen Beyonce here. Beyonce's got Jupiter in the first house, right close to the ascendant. This is the most important point here. So this is a very lucky woman by nature. She's she, Everywhere she goes, doors open for her. So she's a very good um She's got very good stars for fortune just because of her sheer personality. Everybody must love her. But also she's very blessed physically, is she not? I mean, she's considered to be one of the hottest bodies on the planet. Everybody finds her attractive. Mm -hmm. And she is Libra rising and that is very attractive as well. Some other very famous personalities are, I use the example of Julius Caesar, if you've ever seen any documents on him, he yeah. had an incredible reputation. I mean, his reputation was known all over Europe and his reputation got him to the point where he became emperor. 
everybody knew who he was another one with a famous reputation is um, Che Guevara the revolutionary of Cuba now you might think you don't know anything about him but there's a famous photo of him that's a black and red photo uh, done with the revolution with his black hair and a star on his cap that is apparently the most well-known and replicated photograph on the planet so his face, which is the first house, is the most famous face in a photo ever made, ever produced. Okay. So that's when your personality um, becomes popular, well-known, super exposed, and you reach notoriety when you have Jupiter in the first house. You can really do no wrong. These are people who know they're fortunate. Yeah. And then in the second house of money and finance. Now, who do you think of has a lot of uh, money, money luck? Bill Gates. That's true. You're dead right. Bill Gates has Jupiter in the second house. Ah. So, yes, very intelligent man, but unbelievable financial success. And he wasn't even looking for it, was he? He didn't set out to be an entrepreneur, although it is the mark of an entrepreneur because luck is with them financially. Mm. Who's the other really filthy rich person we talk a lot about? Uh, the guy who owns Amazon. I don't know him, actually. I was thinking of Donald Trump. Well, Donald he's, Trump yeah. he's the obvious person, entrepreneur, Jupiter in the planet, in the, in the house of um, money. It's just to... easy. Okay. And in, in Vedic astrology, you inherit your wealth through the second house too. Right. So there's two examples of Jupiter in wealth. Now, third house is communication. Now, communication used to be just speech and then communication became writing, reading, and now it's social media. Yeah. Okay, so it's the ability to communicate through language, um, through the visual arts, through the writing, um, through books, and also through image as in design. So um, I've picked out two people here who've used their areas of communication to their advantage. One is Anthony Robbins. He has Jupiter in the third house of communication. <laughs> So he's had a lot of luck with public speaking, right? Huge, huge. I mean, whether you whether you think that guy is a great speaker or not, who cares? He's just got luck in that area. Huge, huge. He's Amazing. Very popular. Um, popular with his public speaking. Yes. Now, he's been around a long time. I, I'm not a huge fan, but... I do remember him launching in the 90s and it was all about speech, wasn't it? And language, all about cell, cell language. And he still is today. He's probably tried other platforms and they haven't worked and he's back on the stage public speaking now. The other one was the example we used last time, Jennifer, of Lewis Carroll. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, prolific writer. And this is also the house of the mind and your thoughts. And when Jupiter's in the third house of the mind, it creates intense ideas, big ideas, big concepts, big intelligence, big IQ. Yeah. So prolific writing, pro prodigious talent in the book writing area. So someone like J.K. Rowling's has probably got that in there, I guess. She yeah. has other planets there. She doesn't, she doesn't have Jupiter there, but I'll, I'm going to use her as an example with another house. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, third house is your gift of writing and your gift of speech. But the ninth house is the gift of publishing, and it's slightly different. Publishing is different to writing. You can be an ingenious writer or an ingenious marketer and publisher of your writing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Fourth house is the house of home and family. Now, I couldn't find a famous person with this, probably because you don't even hear about them. You don't 
You don't know about these people. What does this mean to have luck in the area of family? Well, when I've read for people, I'll, I'll say, gosh, you've got a really supportive family who are right behind you. They provide for you. You've either inherited either money or assets so you might have inherited a home you've been gifted a home oh wouldn't it be lovely um to have family who just do everything to your advantage i mean that's that's where i would really love to have luck yeah would would someone like i'm thinking just expanding trying to think of people people know someone like mia farrow who was very big in the i don't know 70s or something she adopted like 10 children or so maybe she's got something like that in her chart. Yeah, maybe. I do notice and you have a client I've read for who's got this. Uh, these people like big homes and they've been very blessed, you know, with real estate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So they bought a home, sold it for a fortune, bought a big home and you go into their home and you go, wow, you know, You've been really lucky in this department. Yeah. So I'm mean, yet to find somebody, but I will find them. Mm. Now, fifth house is creative expression. It does include children, but, you know, it's up to you if you want to have children, but it is creative expression. Now, the Indians will say this is intelligence. We would say it's creative thought. Mm. So it's your ability to be a creative genius. Um, it's also about love and romance and things like that. Um, you can have luck in romance and you can have lucky affairs, but it's not very sustainable, so probably nothing to brag about. But where I think it does play is creative talent. And we're talking about the sort of creative talent that you perform. Mm. So it could be singing, dancing, um, art, um, it could be being on a world stage. It could be all sorts of things where you're expressing your individual talents. Um, it could be through communication, depending on if you've got third house or not. But Michael Jackson has this. I mean, we would have to agree, like super, super uniquely talented, creative individual. He was brilliant at what he did. Mm. And when that he got in stage at the age of five. He just took over the stage, right? Yeah. Born performer and had an endless source of creative inspiration. He just went on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so he had a lot of luck in that, but he also had a lot of luck with performance. I mean, if you come in as one of the last children of a huge family and they're already performing on stage you've got a big advantage in life if your family already perform and you're good at performing yeah. that's when your planets line up for you yeah. and then the sixth house is health and also work and service now i don't know too many people that have um jupiter in the house of health and being a naturopath, they probably wouldn't come and see me. I know it can be one of the markers of cancer because that's a growth. But I'm, I was thinking here, who do we know that's really well known that would have the planet of luck in the area of work? Area of work is also workers and employers. And then I was thinking unions and things like that. Um, so the two people I came up with, one was uh, Vladimir Lenin, who was one of the um, communist um, uh, pioneers in Russia. Now, my understanding is Lenin got his uh, experience from working with the workers. He would go to the factories and give them lectures on their rights as workers and, and would advocate for communism via a workers' audience. So I thought I'll look him up and what do you know he does? He has Jupiter in the area of work and workers. It's also employees. So these people have lucky employees or their work environment is very fortunate for them. So in this case, Lennon, you know, all the factory workers were, were his ticket to success. I mean, they really made him who he was 
back then because he didn't have any other not notoriety before then. And then I was thinking, okay, so if he used to work in the equivalent of the trade unions, who have we got in Australia who's well known for their trade union success? Who can you think of in Australian politics? Oh, um, the last leader of the Labor Party was big, isn't it? Um, well, we had a very famous la Labor leader who had mega success in the trade unions, yeah. 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 So I was thinking, okay, who's the lemon of our politics? And I thought Bob Hawke. I mean... The trade unions put him on a stage and he got a ticket all the way to prime ministership, didn't he? True. So he had it in the house. That's right. That's right. Luck through the working class. Mm -hmm. And really, that's what made him so successful, didn't it? It did. It did. You know, and even the way he talked was still very working class. So can I and, ask a question stage before you move on to the second half? of the chart so if someone who's got jupiter in in house one can they just do whatever they do and pick to choose they will be successful yeah in they have a uh, a lucky personality so people love their personality and their personality gets them through the door if not their body okay so then in the other houses, that it, no matter what you do, if you stick to that area, that's where you'll make your luck. That's true. Okay. So seventh house is relationship. Now, this is usually a love relationship, marriage, as uh, uh, you everybody knows this. The seventh house is partnership. But when it's not partnership, it's one-on-one -on -one work. So people who are good at one-on-one -on -one, um, situations. So the first person that came to mind who's, who was good at not just relationship, but the powers of seduction, which is a dance between two people. You know, who's blessed with the powers of seduction that we've known in history? And then I looked at Marilyn Monroe, okay, like, you know, every man on the planet wanted to have a love affair with Marilyn Monroe. She could pick anyone she wanted. She also had very successful partners, didn't she? Two, of course, I mean, there was Kennedy and then there was the playwright who I can't think of. So she managed to score very important people who perhaps made her career even more famous. Um, so these people just have what it takes to be attractive to, to someone else. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you'd have successful relationships then? No, it means you have luck getting them. Okay. Because she, like, she didn't have success in her relationship. No, and there's other reasons for that, but she was never short of suitors. No. <laughs> And Jupiter represents the doorway. It doesn't guarantee any security. It just says doors open in this area and every door opened for her really when it came to relationships. No sustainability whatsoever. I mean, she picked the wrong ones. This is a case of where you can pick someone with a big ego, okay? So you can pick people that come across as being amazing but... Really, they might be full of hot air. So that's the downside of Jupiter in the seventh house. Yeah. You can get egomaniacs with no substance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I, I happened to be watching a documentary last night. Uh, no, not documentary. I was watching David Letterman interview um, Kanye West. It was a fascinating interview. And I don't ever watch David Letterman, but I was really surprised at how bad he he was and he was uncharismatic and I was thinking how has this man become one of the most famous interviewers in the world he must have something in his chart that's blessed him because he's not blessed with anything that I would consider I mean, worthy he's... of being a world-class interviewer mm -hmm. and of course his Jupiter's in the seventh house he's blessed with interviewing skill either interviewing skills or interviewing opportunities yeah 
So this man's been very lucky when it comes to his interviewing career. He probably didn't even plan to be an interviewer. It just happened that way. And, you know, got the right opportunities at the right time to be an interviewer. So that's definitely a seventh house thing. Counselors, interviewers, people who work one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Now the eighth house was really tricky because the eighth house is a mysterious house where weird things happen. Um, it's the house of birth, death, transformation, sex, shared assets. It's a really hard house to nut out. But it's a very deep house and complex house. And I always call it the house of psychology. So anyone with talent here has a talent to, to know the unconscious and how to work with it. So they have the ability to understand symbols, the unconscious. They have um, an uncanny aptitude for detecting the truth, which is always very hidden under things. So it's quite a psychic place to have your Jupiter because you know stuff that's hidden. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to solve mysteries and things like that. So I was thinking, who would we know who's famous that has that talent? Who's perhaps one of the most famous psychologists we've ever had? And I couldn't find Freud's chart, but who's the next most famous psychologist? Jung. Mm -hmm. So Jung had an uncanny ability to delve into the unconscious. Jung was big on symbols, wasn't he? And that's an eighth house thing. And I think we, when it comes to luck, Jung was probably given a lot of opportunities to be a psychologist. He might have had the right education. I mean, was it Austria? Austria was a hot spot of psychology development. So he was just sort of born in a hot spot and he probably had doors open for him to lead him into the world of psychology. Yeah. He probably just fell into it, I would say. Well, he also had an amazing ability to um, tap into the unseen world too. Yes. So he was writing and he had a lot of experiences privately with that. And, of course, he was, he was just getting into understanding numerology when he passed yes numerology is the eighth house astrology symbols dreams everything eighth house um he did have sex with his clients too so he probably had a lot of doors open there for him well the number of old old pinups that we have which would be thrown out of the profession is amazing mm -mm. <laughs> The Psychology Association would get rid of him straight away. So that was the only person I could find and I was bang on right. Jung would have to have luck in the air of psychology. Mm. And then there's the ninth house. I actually found a lot of people with this configuration. So the ninth house is really your connection to God traditionally. So it's your connection to higher learning, which and that means philosophy, religion, ethics, university um it's our moral principle now um it's also travel and culture so this is you know this is the house of the guru the house of the teacher the house of the student um the house of um your belief system so these people are very blessed with strong belief in whatever belief it is now what's interesting is mother Teresa had this she was very blessed with an extremely strong connection to God that was invincible she there was no doubt in her mind God and Christ was governing all her projects right. and also she traveled a lot didn't she and she had a lot of luck in foreign countries she was not from in India she was Albanian I think so she had a lot of success in foreign countries and I've I've talked about this to you before that I, I've had a lot of luck in foreign countries as well and I've got the same thing. This is luck in teaching. So if this person goes into an audience of seekers, they uh, become advisors. They're the priests of society. Now to translate that, we could, you know, these could be, 
the academics of our society, the, um, the new age gurus, you know, the, the prophets of our society. So who have we got here other than Mother Teresa? Um, I, I found Fidel Castro's got this. And Fidel Castro interestingly said religion was the, the, the death of the nation or something like that. But, but he, he developed a whole new moral code. So he was not so interested in his ambitions, but he was interested in re-educating the population, became a huge guru in his own field of social, social work. Um, he, he wrote prolifically and he really was the Cuban guru for a long time, whether you loved him or, or hated him. So he rewrote history with um, many, many publications. Now, another one I found was Jane Austen. Now, Jane Austen, prolific writer, but I don't know enough about Jane Austen to know the difference here. So obviously she was talent in, talented in writing, but the ninth house might have also meant she had luck with publishing. So it could have been that even though there were many female writers, um, she could have had doors open when it comes to publishing that other people didn't have like she might have known a publisher or she had a relationship with a publisher or something like that it was easy for her to get published okay and then we have the 11th house oh sorry the 10th house now there's tons and tons of famous people with jupiter planet of luck and the air of korea and they're all the people we hear about um the most uh, the best position for Jupiter other than right here at nine o'clock is 12 o'clock, which is called the mid heaven. Mm -hmm. And Kim Kardashian has this. And how many times have we as the, the world audience thought, what the heck does Kim Kardashian have to offer? Sure. And nobody really knows except she's had unlimited opportunity in her career doors just opened for her whether she had talent or not <laughs> um so very auspicious place to have jupiter and, and there's heaps of examples here another one is uh kerry packer has jupiter here too he could do no wrong in business he could do no wrong in his career it just grew and grew and grew and grew and then there's steve jobs yeah i've read steve jobs's um biography and that man just had doors open for him okay very very smart like Kerry Packer but you know his his partner in Apple didn't have this configuration right, right. he sort of went into obscurity That's he sort of disappeared yeah. halfway into the project said this is not for me whereas Steve Jobs just grew and grew and grew Apple like yeah. for, to phenomenal success so, okay, very smart individual, but really had a grasp on the potential of his own career. Um, and then the 11th house. So to have luck in the area of friendships, social networks is very good if you want to be famous. So this is sort of what I call hobnobbing, you know, mixing with the rich and famous. So it's not what you know, it's who you know here. So I've got here, um, uh, oh, who's the guy who's in lots of strife for having all the young women come to his house for massaging? Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. All right. So it's a big mystery, isn't it? How did Jeffrey Epstein get his money? But we do know his social networks were very successful for him. He knew everybody. He knew Prince Andrew. He knew everybody that was successful and that was really his, that's how his doors opened for him. He knew everybody. That's how the court system worked to his advantage because he knew everybody. Yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And who else have we got? Um, I've also got Karl Marx here because Karl Marx, um, the 11th house is politics. Okay, when it's not your friends and associates and networks, it's the bigger audience, which is society. And when you have a social conscience for society, you're often very interested in politics. 
So these people are social activists and social gurus and people who are very popular in society. So they're well known for their presence in society. So I put Karl Marx in there too. Now the 12th house, 12th house is another tricky house like the 8th house. This is the house of the unconscious, but the 12th house is also your connection to other worlds. Okay. Now, 12th house is a difficult house. It's the least lucky house. And if you have Jupiter in the 12th house, you're going to be the least lucky. Whereas the 10th house is pretty lucky in the first house. Um, the 12th house is deep spirituality, connections to foreign lands, connections to history, connections to other worlds, fantasy worlds, out of space and weird stuff like that. So JK Rowling has this. Mm. Okay, so she studied history and English literature, which is a total fantasy of history. And of course, she produced books that were fantasy. Yeah. She, was com she was blessed with an incredible imagination for history and fantasy and because Jupiter is about opening doors I really think some doors opened into other worlds for her oh, no doubt. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. like portals opened up for her and she probably downloaded you know the collective unconscious um, symbolism and all, all that sort of thing. So she's a good example. And then there's Julian Assange in there too. Oh, okay. Now the 12th house is where espionage lives, spies, espionage, hidden, um, hidden information again, like the eighth house. And it's also the house of imprisonment. Oh. So poor old Julian Assange has bad luck. Yeah. And uh, he also has a talent for knowing things that are hidden in society or as he's able to tap into other worlds which is actually why he's in prison yeah. because he tapped in, into a new dimension yeah. so these people are half in half out so that's my little tour of the houses what do you think jennifer oh it's so fascinating and from what i've learned from what you've said janine if you can really pick the area where your Jupiter is in, um, I guess it concerns what other planets you have where in your chart as to whether it's going to be an easy trip to even achieve that anyway or a hard trip or, or an easy trip. Um, and so it's just fascinating that if people could focus on where their luck is, um, then they've got to do the hard work to get, but at least doors would open up, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I know for you, Jennifer, you've got um, Jupiter in the eighth house of psychology, mysteries, hidden information, and you're very good at detecting the truth. Yeah. And if Jupiter's always been there, you, you have that natural gift. I do, yeah. Yeah. So all of those skeletons in the closet that we're not supposed to open, you know where all those skeletons are. <laughs> and you know how to open them yeah. when necessary so it's quite a talent and I think anyone with Jupiter there is a natural psychologist whether they've studied it or not that would be true yeah fascinating topic um hope you liked all those examples fantastic and it was so interesting and I and I hope everyone out there um I hope you guys get onto the link, uh, astro.com, is it? Yeah. And, uh, have a look just out of your own curious curiosity to see where Jupiter lies. That's right. And have a full astrology chart done by Janine. Just Yes. And, and I know, Jennifer, for you, when, when clients come to you with two options, which one's going to work, you're really good at working out which one will work so yeah. i'd have to recommend you for the fine detail there yeah for detail but for direction i i think janine everybody should get their charts done especially when you're graduating from high school where should i go what should i study to me astrology is a gift and it will really point you off in the right direction if nothing else it will do that and then it's up to you what you do with it 
Yeah, so right. true. It was fantastic. I really loved it. And I love to see who the famous people you knew, where their luck was. It was so interesting. Matched up really well. Thank yeah. you. All right, then we'll see you next week. See ya. Ta-da. <laughs> Thank you.